my friends in Monet Cafe. This is artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm bringing you a lesson today that was a special request in our Facebook group, Monet Cafe Art Group. And the great thing about that group is we learn together, and often we'll get suggestions or recommendations for a lesson, and that's why I chose this one today. So the lesson in this is how do we work from a reference photo and create a good composition? And this is just gonna be about good composition in general and what makes something a good composition? And are there rules? And uh, absolutely, there are ways that you can um, choose your crop to a photo to enhance your uh, image to make a better painting and that's what we're going to do today. The great thing was I offered up a challenge to our Facebook members in Monet Cafe Art Group to use this particular reference photo. I tried to find one that had many different compositional uh, possibilities and this one was a great photo. I got it off the Paint My Photo website where you can find free reference images to use uh, or copyright free I should say so you are free to use them to paint from. Often though, I'll take an image and I'll crop it like we're gonna do here. So I offered the challenge in the group and I got some wonderful crops from this one photo. I was amazed how many great possibilities there were from one photograph. So I'm gonna share those with you now and I'm going to show you why or why not I think something makes a good composition and I think that will help you in your future painting and creating more lovely artwork. So let's get started and this is going to be fun. All right, so with this particular cropping of our original photo, I happen to really like this one. I think it has utilized the rule of thirds quite nicely and if you're not familiar with that, I've got a little um, pencil here that I can use in my Photoshop. I'm not going to do a great job with this because I don't do I haven't practiced this enough, um, but basically it is dividing the uh, image into thirds. As you can see, almost like tic-tac-toe, one, two, three, one, two, three. So we've got three across and three down. And what is typically a good composition is to avoid putting things right in the middle, like right through here, okay? Your, I should say your horizon line, okay? So your horizon line, that is where um, the sky meets the ground, okay? Not necessarily this tree line, but the far distant where that horizon line would be. And it's actually, it's that part right back there, okay? So as you can see, look at that. That actually is almost right in that third quadrant. And as we move forward into this uh, lesson, I'll talk more about, you can put things on the lower third as well. This horizon line you could put down here, move your image down, and the focus would then be on the sky. So you want to focus on your horizon line being in one of these third quadrants, okay? And then in this photo too, you happen to notice um, this bird. Now, I typically would, I think I would just leave it out unless it was very subtle, um, but it happens to be placed really beautifully. Um, notice these little sections right here. And these sections are the points of interest. And notice they are in that little uh, middle square um, on each corner. And notice that this bird, I believe this is a cormorant. We have them in Florida here, and or an anhinga. There's two birds I can never tell them apart. They dry their wings before fishing in the water. They literally dive down and go fishing in the water. It's really cool. But notice he happens to be, or she, in one of these points of interest here. So that already, we've got two things going for this composition right here. A good placement of the horizon line in the upper third, and a nice point of interest here. Uh, another thing I happen to like is we've got nice flows and entries in here with these marsh grasses. Look how that just leads your eye in and around. And uh, it's actually sort of got a little S-shaped curve. That's another um, composition tool that you can use for your uh, good composition rules, okay? So an S-curve. And that's typically just, you know, in a art, um, you will have like uh, water that does an S-curve, things like that. Um, grasses can do an S-curve. Um, in figurative work, you can have an S-curve. So it's a really useful and beautiful way to um, make your compositions look more pleasing. So this has got, like I said, a lot of that nice entry, this wide waterway entry into this composition is just lovely. So that one was really, really a good one. Let's move on to the next. 
Now this is another one that I chose because I liked how they included more of the marsh uh, instead of cropping out um, so much of it. So this is also very nice. One thing I noticed though that I would do differently with this one is I would not have this horizon line in the middle. Notice this is almost right in the middle of the uh, the composition choice here. So what I would do in this case is I would lose some of that sky. I really do like this tree peeking up here. Um, so you might just go just a little bit right right above that tree line there and that would push that horizon line higher. So again avoid the middle um, horizon line but again I do like so much that's going on in this photograph that would make a beautiful painting here. I do like how this uh, this person cropped it to where your eyes kind of flowing around this way. I happen to love anything with a lot of depth, any kind of landscape. I just love your eye being drawn to wonder what is back there. Now this was I think this one and a couple of others, this was at the top of being one of my favorite compositional choices. I just really was just drawn to this. It almost looks like a painting already. <laughs> um, the things that I like about it is that we don't have the composition line right in the middle. The middle would be probably more like right in here. I'll grab my pencil. And um, and so this does have it a little higher than the middle, which I which I like. Uh, it's not quite in the third, but it's it's really close, and it just seems to work so well. I love the um, the choice of where these trees are and how the water enters in such a way to where this feels balanced. I think it's perhaps these uh, grasses here um, kind of really balance out what's going on over here. And so it feels balanced compositionally. Again, we've got that nice uh, S-shaped curve going on here with the water. Um, it just kind of meanders through the, the, pho the photograph or the soon-to-be painting that draws your eye in. And again, that beautiful distant horizon that you could um, portray with some uh, bluer tones and uh, paler values to give that illusion of distance. So again, I love this composition. This was one of my favorites. All right, again, this is similar to the other one, except that it put the horizon line in the lower third. Notice that um, that's what I was saying at the beginning, is that you can choose to do more sky if you want. And uh, some people, they're just drawn to paint skies, and they, they do them well, so that this would be a better choice for you. I love to paint skies, too, so and clouds. and so. Again, we've got almost the same thing going on here um, with, uh, with this composition, having this nice uh, water going through and drawing your eye back in there. You've got these other little points of interest back here. My pencil's way too dark for this. Of, uh, you just want the eye to, to flit around and enjoy this painting. Again, I would lose that bird. That's obviously, you don't ever want to have anything cut off um, at a composition. Uh, like uh, like a bird like that. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But uh, even these grasses, a little bit peeking up there, I would just make it really soft if I was going to include some of these grasses in here. So again, a beautiful compositional choice. I really like this. And uh, I would actually repaint this, again, using this one too. Loved it. It was really awesome. Now, I really liked this choice too. I think we typically go with a crop that is more in standard sizes where you've got like a 5x7, 8x10 and sometimes we forget that we can make a very uh, tall or very wide format which I find very pleasing. The only disadvantage to these types of uh, crops is that you can't use standard frames. You'd have to get a custom frame. But hey, why not? If the piece comes out beautiful, um, I think you should just go for it. And again, this one has a beautiful positioning of the horizon line and uh, just draws the eye into it. Uh, once again, that bird is not really in a great spot here. It's more like in the center, uh, horizontally in the center. So I would uh, lose it or, or change it or move it somewhere else. Uh, but again, a lovely, very uh, tall format here. I like it. All right, I wanted to point out this one because we need to remember that if you have the access to be able to do some manipulations to photographs, why not? I think the great master painters uh, would have used whatever tool they had at their resource. So why not use it to get ideas of how you might... Uh, uh, oversaturate the color like has been done here a little bit. Uh, I mean you really get a hint of what these colors really are when you push up the saturation like that or the vibrancy to the photograph. Um, so I, I do like 
um, what this person has done to accentuate the color and to cre create a painting perhaps that just really is uh, is gorgeous with color. Now uh, again I think the horizon line is a little bit too much in the middle here um, so I would either lose a little at the bottom or lose a little at the top. Um, probably, oh I don't know, I think it could work either way. But anyway, use uh, whatever tools you have at your fingertips um, to help you with making choices for your painting. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, this next one I liked because it was totally different than the other crops. And there is so much beauty in, um, let me change this, in reflections. So I think that would be the star of the show in this would be the gorgeous reflections here. This is just going to be um, a little bit of these grasses kind of drawing your eye a little bit into the distance here. But these reflections here is what's really going to make this one sing. And uh, some of the dancing around of the water and things going on here. Again, I would um, focus on more of a Richard McKinley approach to some of these. You, may, you can add a little more detail in some areas, but not everywhere. And uh, I think this would really make an interesting painting. Again, your eye is drawn in here. I feel like this wide area is almost like a V in here. And you're drawn into this painting and you explore all these beautiful reflections here. So again, a beautiful composition choice, that one. Oh yeah, again, a wide format. Remember how the one we had a vertical kind of skinny one? This one's not quite as thin as that one was, tall. But uh, again, that nice um, thinner wide format. Beautiful composition line, a horizon line right down here in a lower third. And again, this just this photograph just had such great um, promise to it for a painting with the gorgeous way the water's flowing. These reflections here are going to be really, really interesting and nice. This tree, not quite in the middle. I think the middle would be more like right here. So this is better. And this reflection is going to be really, really nice and interesting here. So again, I was amazed. Uh, you guys in Monet Fa Cafe Art Group, you just I just love you guys because I learn from you, you all the time. I thought this photo that I offered had a lot of composition um, choices, but uh, you guys just really shined with this one, and I was really impressed with your choices. Lots of good choices here. All right, so this next one here, again, oh, I think someone might have done a little bit of... Uh, computer manipulation um, to enhance some of the color and everything. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Another one of my favorites. I can't quit saying that one's my favorite because there, there's so many good ones. Again, look at that nice horizon line. Oh, look at this water just flowing in and out on these marsh grasses. I just love that. Gorgeous choice. I There's not much else I can say about this one except it's just beautiful. Really, really nice. I would uh, definitely uh, keep the clouds and uh, they are a very strong compositional element there. All right, so now let's look at this one. Another one that I really liked that's more of a square. Uh, often we tend to stick with um, the standard formats uh, of the the way they're laid out, whether they be a portrait like a five by seven um, or eight by ten. You know, we've got that difference in the height versus the uh, width. But in this case, it's almost a perfect square. And I really love that. I often forget to paint in perfect squares like that, but this is really nice. I like how there's just a little bit of the, see this horizon line back there? There's just a little peak. It's almost just enough to, to just draw you in here and, and play around and just say, oh, what's back there behind that? So very interesting composition. The bird in this one, this works well. Notice how you got a little bit of that bird's reflection here. So that does work well. This could work well with the bird or without. Again, I would keep the bird subtle. Don't get overly obsessed with detail. Oh, these uh, grasses in this bush just balance this out so well with this tree that's here and weighted more here. There's a nice balance. I think it works better with these grasses than if there weren't any grasses. So again, a nice, nice composition. All right, guys. So I think we are uh, at, oh, oh, no, this was one more. I wanted to share this one. Um, Notice anything different about this? It was flipped uh, horizontally. And I do this quite often with photographs. I'll flip them just to see if it feels right um, the other way. And this one actually does just work beautifully um, flipped on its horizontal um, axis there. So anyway, great job on this one. 
Now, I did choose one that I was going to work from, and now I'm going to go into the actual painting process of that. But anyway, if you haven't joined Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook, you should check it out. we got a lot of great member members. It's a beautiful place for us to share and grow together, and uh, it feels different than any other art group I've ever been in on Facebook, and I, I don't think I'm being prejudiced to you guys, but anyway. All right, guys, so let's get on with the painting. Now for this painting, I chose a piece of Sennelier Le Carte sanded paper. And I was saying that name wrong for so long. I think I said Sennelier. <laughs> so pardon me, I do have some redneck in my DNA, but I like to think I'm a bit sophisticated too. Um, but anyway, I know you guys don't mind. We've got such a great group here. And I chose a uh, new pastel. It's a harder pastel that I'm using here, that rosy color. And I chose more of a, a warm tone or shade because I wanted the, it's like an, with an underpainting, you typically pick something complementary. And this would be a nice complementary, almost like an opposite color on the color wheel to the greens of the marsh grasses and the trees and things like that. So I thought this would make a nice uh, sketch, uh, a color for a sketch for the underpainting. And now I'm going to gradually start adding in some um, other pastels. I pretty much have my basic sketch done here. And uh, in the distant trees, I'm, I'm looking to get that. The darkest thing in this composition is obviously those trees. And typically anything vertical like trees are going to be darker because the sun is not hitting them directly um, like it is on the grasses. So I'm kind of exploring and experimenting here with my darks and... Uh, a lot of times I let the color set the mood of the painting. Instead of going by what I actually see in the photograph, I get started with um, some colors and then I sort of let those be the guide instead of the photograph. And you have to make sure your values are all uh, cohesive and work well together. So I like to play around with color a lot when I paint. Now I'm just going to uh, continue this uh, painting video here without any more voiceover. And I typically don't like to always do the uh, fast forward like this because I know a lot of you guys requested not doing the speed painting um, so that you can actually see what's going on. But this was more about a compositional lesson and so I feel this video is getting a little long. But uh, just enjoy the painting process. I keep this one a bit moody because that uh, Le Carte paper is already uh, that uh, bluish, greenish, grayish uh, tone, and uh, it just felt, I don't know, like almost like a right before uh, the sun's going down or something. So again, letting the color set the mood and having fun with this one. So enjoy, guys, and I hope you learned a lot about composition. And again, please check out the Facebook book group if you haven't already, Monet Cafe Art Group, and uh, join the fun. All right, guys, happy painting. <laughs>